Today we're going to go over all of the features and settings of the Elite MP200i ACDC welder. If you don't know about this welder, or you just want some more information, then check out the video we linked above. But to give you a quick overview, the MP200i can MIG weld, TIG weld on both AC and DC with a foot pedal, and it can stick weld. Plus it can flux core weld and weld aluminum with a spool gun. This is a super diverse machine with a ton of potential. Let's get right into it. On the front of this machine, you have your control and display panel. The two digital displays will show you the welding parameters, menus, and your settings. Just a note here, the last block on the display will always show your units, like volts, amps, and seconds. The adjustment knobs will allow you to move your parameters up or down, and it has a nice course adjustment feature, so if you need to make large adjustments in amperage, voltage, or wire speed, simply press down on the knob while you're turning, and it will increase or decrease in larger increments. Next up is your menu button. A quick press on this will allow you to change some basic settings. A long press will bring you into what's called a user menu, and that will allow for even more settings and adjustments. This is the foot pedal indicator. The welder will automatically know when you plug it in, and it will light up to show the foot pedal is enabled. This here is your VRD indicator. When you're on the stick welding feature, it lets you know if the voltage reducing device is turned on or off. Lastly is your mode selector button. This is where you would select your welding function that you want to use. So DC stick, DC TIG, AC TIG, or MIG. Down below that you have all the connections on this welder. You can check out the user manual for all that information, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. Let's move right down to the MIG welding and show you how to set this up to weld. Using the mode selection, go over to the MIG operation. The default menu will show your voltage and wire speed. For proper settings, reference the chart we provide on the inside of the door on the side of the welder. Turn the knob to adjust your voltage. Remember, for large changes, you can press the knob down while you're turning, and that will give you more coarse adjustments. When you're happy with that, you can hit the menu button once and move over to wire speed. You can again make your adjustments using the knob. Hitting the menu button one more time will move you back to voltage. Now is where we get into the detailed settings. Hold down the menu button for three seconds, and you will get to what we call the user menu. In MIG welding, the first option is for gas selection. You have C25 and C100, flux and aluminum. Selecting C25 would tell the machine that you're going to be welding with 25% CO2 and 75% argon. C100 would be 100% CO2. This helps the welder compensate for the hotter welding with this gas. If you plan on using flux wire, you can switch to this setting and the machine will automatically switch polarity. So no messing with cables when you want to flux core weld. After that, you have the aluminum setting. If you wanted to MIG weld with the spool gun, then this would be the setting that you would want to use. Hit the button again and it'll take you to your wire size. Make sure you match this with the wire size you have hooked up to the machine. Hit the menu button again to move to your inductance setting. Now inductance can be a confusing topic, and there's a ton of great videos on YouTube that really go into the details of it. But most simply put, a lower inductance will give you a sharper weld pool, and a higher inductance will give you a more soft, fluid weld pool. This is adjustable from negative 10% to 10%. The last option is factory default. This will set the machine back to the factory default settings. Once you're happy with your settings, then you can let the machine sit for about five seconds and then it will return to the default view. Now we're gonna move over to DC TIG using the mode adjustment button. Click it twice to get to DC TIG. You are now at the default view and it will automatically bring up your amperage. Use the knob to adjust as necessary. Remember that pressing the knob down and turning it will give you larger adjustment up or down. Pressing the menu button after you selected your amperage will bring you into the pulse settings. You can turn this off if you prefer not to use it, but when pulse is enabled, you can select between 0.5 and 200 pulses per second. With pulse selected, you can also get two more options for base and peak. Base is the percentage of the set amps that you want the low side of the pulse to be at. This is adjustable from 5% to 95%. Peak is the percentage of time the welder is outputting the set or peak amps when pulsing between that and the base amp setting. For example, if at 60%, then 60% of the cycle time will be at the set amps, and 40% will be at the base amps. With a 1 Hz pulse frequency, 0.6 seconds will be at the set amps, and 0.4 seconds will be at the base. It's pretty simple to use. That's everything in the default menu. Let's hold down the menu button to get into the user menu. The first option is start. This allows you to change back and forth between high frequency and lift start. High frequency allows you to start an arc without the tungsten physically touching the piece. Lift start is a scratch start option. Scratch the tungsten to the workpiece to start an arc. I like to stay with high frequency start. Hit the menu to cycle to upslope. 
This is the amount of time it takes for the welder to ramp up to your desired amperage after you start your arc. This is adjustable from zero to 15 seconds, zero being instant full amperage. The next option is downslope, which you guessed it, is the amount of time it takes for the amperage to ramp down from the set amps after the trigger is released. This is adjustable from zero to 25 seconds. After that, you have post flow. This is the amount of time that gas flows out of your torch after the arc is terminated. This helps cool the workpiece after you completed your weld. Last is the factory default menu. If you select this, it will default all your TIG settings to what it comes with out of the box. Again, you can take your hand off the machine and wait about five seconds to return to the default menu. All in all, this is a pretty easy navigation to get your settings totally dialed in. Let's use that mode function and go ahead over to the AC TIG function. Again, we start in the default menu. Similar to DC, you have the option to adjust the amperage using the knob. Hitting the menu button will take you to AC balance. AC balance adjusts the amount of time that the machine is on electrode positive. A higher percentage here results in more cleaning effect and a smoother weld seam. However, your penetration will be more shallow. A lower percentage will result in deeper penetration, but less cleaning area. AC frequency creates a more intense and concentrated arc with a smoother weld seam. This would be helpful in tighter areas where you don't want to damage any nearby features on a project. A good starting frequency for that tight arc is about 120 Hz. Remember that lower AC frequencies create a wider seam. A good minimum frequency is about 80 Hz and you can adjust from there. Once you get your AC balance and AC frequency dialed in, you can hit the menu button and move to pulse again. This is the same process we spoke about on the DC TIG selection. Hitting menu again will bring you back to your base and peak amperage. Let's go ahead and hold that menu button for three seconds to bring us to the user menu. Again, the default menu will give you the basic settings and the user menu will give you more detailed settings. Once in the user menu, our first option is wave. Here you can change between square wave and sine wave. Square wave offers instantaneous switch of the electrode polarity. This puts more heat into the metal than a standard sine wave, which can allow for faster travel speeds. Sine wave is a traditional gradual swap of electrode polarity. After you select your wave function, you can go through the rest of the options, which are once again, upslope, downslope, and post flow. As always, you can factory reset to the AC settings that come with the machine. Now, if you wanna do some stick welding with this machine, then you can go ahead and use the mode button to switch back to DC stick. The default menu brings up amperage first. Rotating this knob will adjust your amperage output. Hit the menu button once and you'll move over to hot start settings. The hot start increases the amperage over the set point when the arc is initiated. This makes it easier to start and maintain an arc, especially in real adverse conditions. The higher the set percentage, the greater this effect is. Hit menu again and you will get to the force setting. This is also known as arc force or dig. This allows for a tighter arc to the workpiece without extinguishing. This is accomplished by dynamically adjusting the amperage upward as the voltage of the arc drops when the stick is moved closer to the workpiece in order to maintain the same overall power output. The higher the percentage, the greater this effect is. Let's move over to the user menu by holding the menu button down for three seconds. The first option you will see is VRD, which we briefly mentioned earlier. Turn on the voltage reducing device or VRD on or off. The VRD drops voltage when not stick welding to help prevent potential arc start or shock when replacing an electrode. Normal output is 68 volts, while VRD drops the non-load voltage to roughly 24 volts. Lastly, you have that same factory default option we talked about earlier in the other three processes. All right, so that was a ton of information. And if you feel like you still need some more help, you can always check out the user manual where we go over all of this plus some more. That will even be able to help you with your torch cable management or installation between different processes. Let's put this into practice. I have some steel here I wanna weld with the MIG setting. Let's go through that and show you how good this welds. So I have my torch and my ground cable in the right spot and my gas is set to about 35 CFM. I am using 25% CO2 and 75% argon. Now we can use the mode selection to get to MIG. First thing I do is set my voltage. Let's take a look at the chart. Find the MIG operation, then find your wire type then find your box for gas type, then move down to the wire diameter. Use the top of the chart to find the intersection between wire diameter and thickness of your metal. For 3 16 of an inch, we need about 330 inches per minute wire speed and 18 volts. These are rough settings and meant to be a good starting point. Adjust your settings as you practice your welds. Now we can move to the user menu. I'll select C25 because I'm using a mixed gas bottle. Next, I'll select my wire diameter, 0.030. 
Like I mentioned before, inductance is a learned preference. Take some time to mess around with inductance and you'll figure out what you like. And just like that, I'm ready to weld. I hope this helps you get set up with the MP200i. For more information on this welder, you can click the link to visit eastwood.com.